Welcome to FamilyDoctor.Expert. I'm Grant Blaschke, I'm a GP. Today we're gonna to talk about hay fever. How annoying is it for people with hay fever? They've got the runny nose, um, blocked nose, often blocked ears, itchy eyes, they're tired, they're irritable, they're sick of blowing their nose, and um, they really don't enjoy it very much. Now, often they've tried a few things for hay fever, or what we call the medical terminology is allergic rhinitis. So people have often tried a decongestant nasal spray, um, which can be helpful, important not to use it for more than five days, as it can co cause a rebound effect um, if you overuse it. Sometimes they've used eye drops, antihistamine eye drops in particular can be quite useful for people who are getting hay fever symptoms. Often they've used an oral antihistamine, usually a non-drowsy, non-sedating antihistamine, which can be very useful at managing the symptoms. And for most people, this is what they will do and, and manage the symptoms as best they can. But I guess it's good to know that there are more things that you can do. So if you come along to your doctor, your doctor's gonna have a look at you, have a look if you've got any signs of infection. Sometimes infection can get confused with hay fever. So they'll make sure there's no infection there. The next thing they might consider for you is trying um, an intranasal, so nasal spray corticosteroid. Some of these are over the counter, some of the stronger ones you need a prescription for. And um, this can be quite useful at reducing symptoms too. But you can see with this approach that we haven't really diagnosed particularly what people are allergic to. Often we're just trying to manage it by uh, managing the symptoms without fully understanding well what is the allergen that's causing the problem. So you should know there are four main groups of allergens that can bother people. The pollens, molds, animal furs, and dust mite. And I'll talk a little bit about each of these. So how do we know what you're allergic to? Well, your doctor may do a blood test, what's called a RAST test, R-A-S-T, which will tell them which group of allergens you're actually allergic to. It's not a perfect test. It's not perfectly sensitive or specific. That means some, some people will come up normal, even though they're having lots of symptoms. Some people, will, it'll come up positive, even though they haven't got much hay fever. So it's not perfect, but it can give the doctor a good idea as to what's going on. Now, if you want a more gold standard test, the doctor may send you to an allergist who can do what's called a skin test. Um, it needs to be done by someone who's pretty experienced at doing them. They give you small little injections of the various allergens and have a look at what your body does in terms of reacting to each of those. There's a very small risk when you have these of having a thing called anaphylaxis, which is like a more extreme allergic reaction. So it needs to be done in a supervised way. But it does give us the gold standard answer as to exactly what you're allergic to. Why do we want to know exactly what you're allergic to? Because there is some good evidence that if you avoid your particular group of allergens, that you might get some improvement in symptoms. So if pollens are your main problem, well, Obviously, you, you want to be careful during springtime when all the grass pollens and the tree pollens are out there. If you're riding to work or walking to work, you might put a mask on. Um, if you're in the car, wind up the windows. Um, you might put the air conditioning on recirculate rather than bringing the air in from outside. If you're washing your clothes, maybe dry them in the dryer rather than having them sit outside and get pollens all over them. A uh, couple of things to know, the pollens are usually worse in the morning, worse after thunderstorms, worse on windy days. So there's a few things you can do to try and avoid the pollens. What about mold? Usually if you're working or at home, you've got some rising damp or you've got some mold, you'll know about it. Um, anything that you can do to remove the mold to improve ventilation, um, Air conditioning can be quite helpful. Anything that's going to reduce the humidity can be quite helpful in removing some of the moulds and, and that's something worth looking at. Making sure there are no leaks in the roof. If there is leaking, getting it fixed and that can be very helpful. What about if it's dust mite? Now dust mite's very common, particularly we see that in children. Sometimes it's also setting off the hay fever and causing asthma. Lots of things you can do if you can afford it replacing carpet with hard floors is good. Otherwise, vacuuming the carpet once a week, 
washing the sheets and pillowcases and everything in hot water once a week. For, if you can afford it, getting some dust covers over the mattress, over the doona, that can be really helpful at reducing dust mite symptoms. Animal fur, bit of a tricky emotional one this. What if you've got your lovely dog or cat that the whole family's attached to? Well, as a start, you could keep it out of the person's bedroom. Um, that would be a good idea. Um, sometimes in more extreme cases, you know, the dog or cat might have to be kept outside uh, because people can really be quite allergic to it. Other animal furs can also cause a problem that can be particularly severe reaction sometimes with horse um, hair. So you can look at that if that's relevant to you. So it's worth knowing which ones you're allergic to because there's a whole lot of things you could do to actually avoid them. Now, if your allergy symptoms are still driving you mad, there is something else you can do. You can go to a, a specialist, a clinical allergist, who'll do that skin test that I talked to you about and do a desensitization, immunotherapy program. So when you have this done, you will have a small injection every two weeks where you're getting tiny doses gradually increasing to desensitize you to the allergens that you're allergic to. It can take a couple of years, so it's a big commitment to do it. We've got probably about 40 or 50 people here. So if you look at our fridge, we've got these little containers full of, of allergens um, that people come back every two weeks, quickly get their shot, make sure they're okay. And if they tolerate that level, we increase the dose next time. So that's useful to know. So you can see there's quite a lot that you can do about hay fever. Um, just a word of caution um, about my uh, non-orthodox medical colleagues. Certainly they have embraced the issue of allergy and testing for allergy and treating for allergy um, in ways that I would describe are not fully scientific, at least in the boring way that I think of science with randomized controlled trials and peer reviewed studies and all, all that boring stuff. So it's not for me to tell you whether or not to go along, but just a couple of cautions and questions you could ask. Make sure that um, you could ask them what evidence there is for the treatment that they're giving for you. Ask them if the tests that they're doing are mainstream, scientifically proven studies. Ask them what it's going to cost and if there might be some side effects. So I think you get the message there that I think you need some caution when um, uh, dealing with non-orthodox medical practitioners who are promoting allergy uh, diagnosis and treatments. So I wish you well and all the best from familydoctor.expert.